Good morning, and welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge, New Jersey. We are so glad that, that you are joining us this Sunday for worship. There are a couple of announcements I do want to highlight. Tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. on Google Meet, the worship committee will meet. You will be getting in information later today. Also, the youth group event for ice skating this evening has been canceled because Roosevelt Park is closed because of COVID. More in information about rescheduling will come later as well. Also, we are anticipating to have in-person worship next Sunday, January 16th, so please try to come. We will also be ordaining and installing our deacons, elders, and new officers for the year. So please do join us. That is all of the announcements I have, so let us begin our worship with our prelude. Let us begin with our call to worship. Arise, shine, your light has come. Darkness covers the earth, but God's glory shines brightly. Lift up your eyes, look around. The light of God shines radiantly. Let us pray. God of light and love, shine upon our lives as we welcome the mystery of your love. Guide us toward your true gift, for our hearts long to encounter with the holy. Quiet our expectations, that we might be surprised by the unexpected. Open our eyes, that we might find you in unanticipated places. Shine your light upon us, that we might see you clearly and recognize your faith, face in all people. Amen. Please join us with our first hymn, As with Gladness, Men of Old, and we will sing verses 1 and 2.
each and every day we try to see God in the world and in our lives. And if we are honest with ourselves, we realize that most of the time we miss the signs of the divine that are all around us. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. Holy God, even though the presents have been opened, the cookies have been eaten, and the celebrations have left us exhausted, we still long for something more. Let your spirit come to us again, guiding us toward true joy. In all of our busy celebrations, remind us that you desire righteousness and justice for a world in need of generous hearts. May the light of Jesus Christ, the world's true light, live among us and turn our lives from oppressive power toward liberation and hope. Amen. Dear friends, God searches our hearts as diligently as the Magi searched for and followed the star. Know that God's love and forgiveness is never ending. Thanks be to God. morning we are so privileged to have Matthew Barony um, home from Georgia to come and share with us more about his, his ministry. So Matt, um, feel free to take off your mask when you speak and we welcome you. Thank you, Pastor Marie. Akite Omodeto, Ohio Gozaimas. Happy New Year, and also good morning to you all. Yeah, I'm so happy to uh, get to be here uh, this morning, back in First Pres, and for those of you on Facebook Live, I enjoy getting to watch uh, there as well, and I hope you're doing well in this new year and staying healthy as you can, uh, too. Uh, just wanted to start by saying thank you to you, Pastor Ray, and then, of course, to the whole church. Uh, I'm so grateful to have grown up here in Woodbridge and in First Pres all these years, and I've been in Georgia the last, coming on now, to be my seventh year in Georgia already, which is great. Um, I'm really enjoying being down in Atlanta, Georgia, and that's where I've been serving with an organization called Second Level Ministry. And we serve the Japanese people through discipleship um, and uh, getting them equipped to serve in the church, but also we get to do evangelism uh, with them. So I wanted to share just a few highlights from the past year. So some of those things that have been taking place, um, we continue to make relationships. So there's like about 5,000 uh, Japanese or so in the Atlanta area, which is great. And they are made up of students and expats, those that are coming to work with their organization or their company, and they get sent for a certain amount of months or years. So we've had them, and we're starting to get a trickle of students against, which is great, because we're, we're, we didn't have too many in 2020 because they all left back to Japan for COVID. But we continue to meet them, especially to build relationship and practice Japanese, which is really awesome. That's one of my favorite things. 
And then also this past year, we started a four-month internship program, and I helped oversee that locally in uh, the Atlanta area. And we brought in different people who have hearts for Japan and want to serve Japanese and get that cross-cultural experience and serve alongside our local team, which was really awesome. And then this past year, our, our organization, Second Level, we do a mentorship conference. One of our four big points, besides creating resources, doing uh, training, is doing mentorship conferences, which in that we do um, some training. So we did that online back in October 9th, uh, 16th, and the 23rd, over three weeks, uh, three Saturdays in Japan. We had 60 different people join online and do this training, which is helping Japanese churches and pastors and lay people get more equipped to share the gospel, which is really awesome. And then I was also a part of doing an online uh, international conference with, your or with an organization called RJC, Reaching Japanese for Christ. And I'm actually helping this year. We have a conference coming up uh, next month in, uh, in February in, over in Seattle. So I'm really excited to be helping with that planning committee. But last year we did it all online. This year it's probably going to be some kind of hybrid kind of connection. But the great thing about this conference is we get to network with other Japanese missionaries, churches. We have pastors come in. There's workshops. And it's over a couple of days where we get to pour into one another and help each other. So that's one of the great things as well. And then uh, also this past year, um, I became the, I was the director of mobilization. We have one other staff that's also a director of mobilization. But I just became the national director of mobilization with my organization. And I'll be starting a new three-year term starting this March, uh, which is great. And what this role entails is a lot of the same things I'm already doing with coaching and mobilizing, leading the local Atlanta team, uh, maybe leading a mission team to Japan in the future. But I'm also uh, going to be able to go to other states. So not just Georgia, but maybe Florida. I'm already planning a trip to Texas to see some of our staff, but also in uh, Los Angeles. And then down the line, when things open up more, to Japan. So looking ahead, um, I ask that you be praying for my role as the National Director of Mobilization, but also for getting um, to do this uh, RJC International Conference next month. We're hoping to have at least 100 people or so in person, and if it's online, that might go up to like, like it was last year, almost 250, 500, um, anybody viewing at one time. And then also we have a special celebration this year. My organization is having their 20th anniversary, so we have that in June on the 23rd. And then the following two days, the mentorship conference that we did online last year, we're going to do in person this year. Uh, and that will be uh, those two events. The 20th anniversary of the mentorship conference will all be over three days in June. And then also we're going to have a next uh, internship program, which may start in March. So if you can be praying for that, I help to oversee that. So that's really important, and it takes up a lot of my time. But God has gifted me with uh, ability to equip others and call them in and help them discern their calling for future service with Japanese. Um, and then also, um, again, be praying that the borders open in time. I know a lot of missionary friends, over 20 actually, that are trying to get to Japan, but they've been stuck some of them for months now, some of them for a year, trying to get to Japan. So if you can please be praying for them. Um, even I myself and uh, my organization, we've had to postpone two years in a row, and probably this year too, we'll have to postpone to go to Japan. But we are making plans, lightly, to go to Japan again in the future. So that might not be until late 2022 or 2023. And again, um, I have my newsletter. I'll leave it with the church. Uh, this is my organization's newsletter. We put this out twice a year. And then I also have my own personal newsletter, which I can send to the church. Or if any of you are interested, please reach out to me. I can find you on Facebook or email, whichever is easiest, and get you that newsletter, which kind of gives you more updates with pictures and stuff. So again, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you so much, Pastor Marie and First Press. Thank you so much. Thanks, Matt. 
I know the congregation loves hearing your updates. Thank you. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, help us to follow the star, which is the light of love. May its light lead us to your deepest joy. Amen. Our first lesson comes from Isaiah, chapter 60, one, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall, th shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The second lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they, had, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the, the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy words. Well, Merry Christmas. And I say that because for so many traditions, and especially our brothers and sisters in the Eastern Church or the Orthodox Church, Christmas is the day after Epiphany. And they, and they argue this, and it's one of the reasons why the Western Church and the Eastern Church split apart in 1054.
They argue this because they say that if nobody recognized God coming to earth, God's coming to earth wouldn't have mattered. And think about it, because isn't there kernels of truth in that? Yes, we celebrate on December 24th, Christmas Eve, God coming to the earth in the form of a human, coming as a baby. And as important as the incarnation is, if nobody recognized it, would it have really mattered? Because think about it. Yes, the angel came and told the shepherds in the fields with their flocks, and they went and glorified God. But think about it. Shepherds aren't important people. So even if they said to everyone they knew, this big thing happened, they could be easily dismissed. It's not until important people from another land recognize what God did, come to Israel, ask the local leader about it, that it becomes an event. I think that is why for so many traditions all around the globe, Three Kings Day or Epiphany is a day of great celebration. Even in my own family, my grandmothers always held one Christmas gift that I did not receive until Epiphany when Labafana came to all the good little children of Italy. And the story is, is this, that Labafana was the old woman who also saw the star and heard the story of the Magi and set on her own journey. She never made it to the Christ child because she kept getting sidetracked, finding the Christ child in the faces and the spirits of every child she met. And so I celebrated Labafana's roaming the earth, searching diligently for the Christ child growing up because it's that knowledge, it's that seeking and finding that is the most important. I think in so many ways that's why one of the most cherished services in our church year is the late service on Christmas Eve because there's something about being in the dark and lighting the candle to represent the star. There's something about the light overcoming the darkness that speaks to us, and it's the recognition of the Christ event in our lives that gives our lives meaning. Because things can happen, but if we don't recognize them, did it really matter? It's kind of like the old saying, if a tree falls in a forest where nobody can hear it, does it make noise when it falls down? You can argue both sides, but if nobody recognizes or experiences an event, the event does happen but it loses its meaning, or it never gets its meaning. 
And that is why epiphany is so important. And yes, it's fun, because you get to walk wise men around. I've had churches where, where from the first Sunday of Advent until Epiphany, the wise men started on the outside windows and went and came up the aisles. Because there's something about the recognition that God is with us, that God chose to come and be a part of us. And it is in that recognition where the meaning and the faith and the transformational event comes to all of our lives. And Epiphany is the bridge, in so many ways, to the beginning of Lent. In other parts of the world and other parts of this country, it is now the Mardi Gras season. It's now time for the king cake, and it is time to celebrate the joy of having God with us. So as we celebrate Epiphany, take time to recognize where God lives in your life and in the lives of others around you. If you're having a hard time recognizing it, seek it out a bit more. Find that star in your life and follow it and see what God will have for you for the rest of this year. May we all follow the light of the star that God sends us and Merry Christmas. Amen. I invite you to join in our affirmation of faith as together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join us in singing the next hymn, What Star Is This With Beams So Bright? We will sing verses 1 and 2.
have now come to the time in our service where we share our joys, our concerns, our reasons to give thanks. If you email, text, or call me, I will add them next week, and next week, hopefully, we will be sharing in person. But I, did, I do want to share some. Um, the first is that Brene Aaron's brother, Ronald Sparrow, passed away suddenly this Wednesday, so we keep his family in our, our thoughts and prayers. Also, Warren Loder asks for prayers for Joe Gonder, who has been diagnosed with cancer, and for Joe's daughter, who has tested positive for COVID. Warren also asks for prayers for his son-in-law, Nick, who has COVID, and his daughter, who, even though she hasn't tested positive, is showing symptoms. So we do keep everyone um, in our our thoughts and prayers. And with all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God in prayer, first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the ways in which we see and discover your love each and every day for us. Help us to be more like the wise men. Help us to search for you and signs of you wherever we go. Help us to look for those places where your divine love is ready and willing to be recognized. And may we all find those places of divine love and share them with the world. Because, God, it's so easy to forget. We have so much to do. We have so much on our minds. We have so much that we worry about and so much that concerns us. At times, it weighs us down, and we forget. We forget that we are your chosen and your holy people, and we forget to look for you. Help us find you in all of the places you are, which is all places and help us shine your light where it is needed the most. Holy God, on this day, we pray for so many people and situations. We pray for all of those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray with all those people who celebrate on this day knowing that those celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray for all of those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them, and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, Holy God, for all those people who struggle with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small, we ask that they know your hope. Holy God, we also pray for all of those people in so many different ways who willingly put themselves at risk so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred, and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of our earth. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, diligently searching 
the sign for the signs of your love. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, the Magi brought their gifts to honor the promised child of God. Let us bring the gifts of our lives in gratitude for God's bright light of love. Please remember that you can mail in your offering. You can drive by and drop it off in the mailbox, or you may give online.
Let us pray together our prayer of dedication. Giver of every gift, source of all goodness and light, we open the treasure chests of our hearts before you. We offer you gifts of gold to care for those in need. We offer you gifts of love to serve a hurting world. Bless our gifts and our lives. Use them to love and heal the world. Amen. Our final hymn is We Three Kings of Orient Are. We will sing verses 1 and 5. Before the benediction, I just want to um, say one thing. You all may be thinking that you have never seen this nativity set before, and you are correct. This is not one of the churches. This is actually one of mine. Um, it is carved from olive wood. It was bought in Bethlehem by my um, one of my very first mentors in ministry who has become a dear and cherished friend. And he gave it to me as an ordination gift. So I, I share it with you. Unfortunately, we've been remote, so um, I will let you all see it some, some other time. But it is one of my deeply cherished nativity sets. Now, go, following the star that God has put before us all, so that we may always see and share the divine love wherever we go. May God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, which is our inspiration, be with us all this day, this night, and all our days to come. Amen. <laughs>